This is the story of one family and its role in the history of the United States. It is the story of Hardwick Clothes, a family, a factory, and a future. This is a story of clothing that you wear, made by an industry as old as mankind itself, and by modern manufacturers who have grown with this nation. The Hardwick family is rooted in the hills of eastern Tennessee, in a small town called Cleveland, the seat of Bradley County. It wasn't always a tranquil area. Tennessee saw some of the bloodiest fighting in the war between the states. It was the last state to secede, and the first to be readmitted to the Union. Peace returned to the nation, and Arkansas started to heal its wounds. As the soldiers returned to them in Tennessee, found the economy crippled by years of war, Bradley County turned to Encumbilla's new C.L. Hardwick was there to lead the way. In 1880, C.L. Hardwick set out to make Cleveland, Tennessee a textile manufacturing center. It wasn't markets for the finished product. C. Hardwick wasn't going to be denied and founded the Cleveland Woolen Mill. He built a mill that housed 25 employees and produced 2,750 yards of goods. Once it got C.L. Hardwick venture continued to grow. In 1890, the plant started to produce 150 pairs of rough pants each day. They had two legs joined at the seat. They wore well, covered the body well enough to meet the legal standards of the day, and people bought them. Tina took over and soon faced challenge to match the father faced in 1880. Early one day in 1904, fire started at the Cleveland Woolen Mill. The fire spread quickly through the wooden structure, and by the end of the day, the Hardwick dream lay in smoldering ashes. It was time for a new dream in the Hardwick tradition of new, more durable buildings and the most advanced equipment available of the day. Together, executives and employees cleared away the ashes and started the challenging task of rebuilding the mill. Architects were called in, plans were prepared, and the building incorporated the most advanced equipment available of the day. With this new advanced equipment, the mill operation expanded into new fabrics, and soon the garment plant had added an expanded product line as well as jeans. By 1906, the Cleveland Woolen Mills was famous for its dollar pants, the durable goods were known nationwide, and they led the way as the Hardwick operation expanded into men's and boys' suits. Suddenly, war. World War I was upon us. To make the world safe for democracy, the Cleveland Woolen Mills joined in the war effort. At home, uniforms for the troops, and at the front, the men of Bradley County. By 1925, Cleveland Woolen Mills was the largest plant of its kind in the world, taking raw wool and turning it into finished clothing. The company motto was, from sheep back to clothing rack. The time had come to mark their leadership in the field and to perpetuate the name of the man whose vision had come to reality. At this point, Hardwick changed the corporate name to Hardwick Woolen Mills. Then in 1929, the monetary crisis created by the stock market crash brought the economic life of much of the world to a grinding halt. Its effect in the South was devastating. But Hardwick Woolen Mills and its employees learned how to cope with this drastic change. A large part of the production moved into the home. The pants were cut in the feet and delivered to the workers' homes. At the same time, the finished pants from the previous delivery were picked up. Hardwick trucks and wagons became a familiar sight passing along the country roads, enabling economic recovery to come to the area. This cottage industry of home-sewn manufacturing lasted until the new wage and hour regulations of the National Recovery Act were passed. But by this time, there was again new technology to take up the slack, and production continued to increase.
As the country slowly came out from under the depression, Hardwick produced clothes in keeping with the times. Knickers, which started out as clothing for the golf course, were seen everywhere. The mill produced summer and winter suits all year long. For years, the sturdy Hardwick winter pants accounted for more sales than any other Hardwick item. In 1940, George L. Hardwick Sr. passed away. His son, George Hardwick Jr., succeeded him. December 7th, 1941, with an East sneak attack on Pearl Harbor, the U.S. was again suddenly at war. As the nation recovered from the shock, almost overnight, Hardwick joined the war effort. As America turned to the challenge of survival, tweeds and twills gave way to navy blue and army drab. Civilian clothing needs had put aside at Hardwick for the job of making uniforms for America's fighting men. Four years later, our victorious troops returned. With peace, our country was on the road to prosperity. Hardwick Woolen Mills and its people were again asked to adapt to meet the demands of the times. With the return of peace, new styles were being created and new fabrics were becoming available. Hardwick was ready. In 1947, Frank T. Hart assumed the presidency of the company. A few years after World War II, the demand in menswear changed from bulky woolen fabrics to smoother finish worsted clothing. As a result of this, Hart sold its woolen mill operation in 1951 in favor of purchasing the many different kinds of fabrics it now needed. In the early 1950s, Hardwick Clothes moved into national advertising. Constantly changing fashion trends prompted the addition of ladies' blazers to the line. The introduction of the Hardwick blazer for both men and women, at a time when blazers were becoming increasingly popular, proved to be a highly successful move. And Hardwick became one of the world's largest producers of blazers. In 1967, a promotion that also helped the popularity of the blazer was the designation of the Hardwick Blazer as the official blazer of the World Series of Golf. Frank Hardwick was president of Hardwick until 1970. D.S. Stewart, a great-grandson of the company's founder, became Hardwick's fifth president. In 1974, Hardwick moved into a new 175,000 square foot inc. The move into this spacious one level facility increased efficiency tremendously. Employees who had been working on different floors were now in regular contact with each other so that any problems could be solved more quickly. The improved working conditions renewed the spirit of togetherness and teamwork. This spirit is evidenced in pride of workmanship and in quality control throughout every stage of the manufacturing process, beginning with the fabrics being received at the plant. Fabrics which have not been pre-shrunk require sponging. This process shrinks the fabric to meet Hardwick standards for uniformity and quality. Every bolt of fabric is inspected to ensure that it conforms to Hardwick specifications before being stored to await cutting orders. A large variety of fabrics is the mainstay of Hardwick clothes, from worsteds, linens, silks, camel hair, cottons and blends, classic Paris tweeds from Scotland. A variety of solids in both bright and basic colors for blazers remains in stock throughout the year. Companies in the United States have the most sophisticated operations in the world for manufacturing ready-to-wear garments. One of Hardwick's biggest advances in the manufacturing process has been through the introduction of computerized equipment. A designer can now place a pattern into a digitizer to get any number of accurate sizes for that pattern. Scaled versions of the pattern pieces are displayed on a computer screen making it possible for the operator to determine the best placement of pattern pieces for the most efficient fabric use. When this has been determined, the computerized pattern marker goes to work 
eliminating the tedious and time-consuming job of tracing patterns by hand. In the cutting area, fabrics are spread in 20 to 40 layers with the pattern placed on top. The fabric is then cut into manageable pattern blocks before going to the band knife operator for precision cutting. Each piece is labeled with a coded ticket, ensuring that every piece of a garment is assembled from the same fabric lot. Next, to provide extra durability, certain pieces of fabric are fused with interfacing in a heat bonding process. This also saves a sewing step. Hardwick was a pioneer in the development of fusing for manufacturing garments, and its specifications have now been adopted by all major manufacturers of fusible interlining. In the sewing area, each person is a craftsman and specializes in a specific task, whether it's the sewing of pockets, collars, sleeves, or zippers. Keen attention is paid to detail, with numerous inspections throughout the process. Special computerized machines make sure that sleeves are set in with the exact amount of ease for a quality fit. The pressing operation is also computerized to ensure that the proper heat is dispensed for the specific fabrics. In addition, special light sensors bring critical areas to the attention of the pressing operator. This is another example of Hardwick's concern for quality. At the end of the line, buttons are attached before the garments undergo a final inspection. This final inspection is critical because it ensures that all garments made by Hardwick meet the high standards of quality. This is how Hardwick has earned its reputation for fine craftsmanship. Orders can be filled promptly from a large inventory of suits, blazers, and other garments. Approximately half of Hardwick's business is private labeling for hundreds of stores. Hardwick clothes are shipped to every state in the Union. This sizable operation is coordinated by personable and helpful customer service representatives, aided by a computer network. A toll-free telephone number provides customers with a convenient way to place orders. At Hardwick Clothes, crafted with pride in the USA, is more than a label. It is a work philosophy. That work philosophy and close, warm employee management relationships are key factors in establishing Hardwick as a major force in the apparel market. Hardwick's policy is to offer its customers something new and different to enhance their regular wardrobes. Hardwick looks for attributes of comfort as well as something unique in style to attract attention. An emphasis on design for both ladies and men is essential at Hardwick. The ladies line was expanded in 1980 to include seasonal suits, skirts, pants, and shorts, and the line became known as Lady Hardwick. For its efforts, Hardwick has received a number of prestigious awards for design excellence. Twice each year, Hardwick's national sales force comes to Cleveland from all over the United States to preview the new lines. Salesmen then take the new seasonal lines to clothing stores across the nation. Each year, the top volume salesmen are honored with induction into the President's Club. To further serve its customers, Hardwick has a fully staffed showroom in New York City, where buyers for large chains, department stores, and buying groups make their selections. Showrooms are also located in Los Angeles, Minneapolis, Atlanta, Boston, and Salt Lake City. As a family-owned business, a number of family members participate in the daily operations and management of Hardwick. In 1983, W.B. Foster Jr., another great-grandson of Hardwick's founder, succeeded D.S. Stewart as president. With the elevation of Foster in January of 1988 to the position of chairman of the board and chief executive officer, Joe V. Williams III, a great-great-grandson of the founder, became the seventh president. The heart of Hardwick is its people in Cleveland, Tennessee. Since Hardwick's beginning, thousands have worked in the struggle to make this company the success it is today. These are the people that have made Hardwick a leader in the fashion industry. These are the people who helped rebuild the plant that was destroyed by fire. 
These are the people who have pulled together during times of economic recession and depression. These are the people who formed ranks and stood together during times of national emergency. These are the people whose unwavering loyalty to their company has been returned in kind by the Hardwick family. That sense of community, pride, and success have all sustained Hardwick through its every phase. From $1 pants to clothes for the corporate image. Continuing in its second century of operation, Hardwick Clothes is proud of its heritage and excited about its future.